Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Walking and Talking with Phoenix. Uh, today I'm going to discuss some social dynamics, and in particular, the reason why there is this perception in a lot of young girls that a lot of young guys, or even older guys, are too clingy and too sentimental and too needy, full stop. Whereas there's a perception that exists in a lot of guys' minds that, you know, women are too ready to leave and too fickle and superficial and not really, you know, wanting to commit but just want to have fun. So, you know, basically let's start by discussing, you know, the basis for attraction. Now, if we take this to a primitive um, level and we look at our primordial, you know, desires to spread the seed and procreate, I mean it is our uh, biological imperative, you know, to further our existence, then you could say that the basis for attraction, where the people are consciously looking for someone to mate with, it, even if someone doesn't want to have children in their head, um, I think it's ingrained in both males and females to seek out a mate that they'd be happy to procreate with and share genes with, you know, personality traits and more so genes that they'd like to see passed on onto the offspring. I mean, guy, girls end up winding up with assholes, so it's not always about personality traits that you'd ideally have passed on, but, you know, generally they go for the alpha male, you know, one is stronger or taller or has the genes which complements what they're looking for and what works with them. So putting that aside, putting that very base primitive level of, you know, attraction based on genetics and traits, I think there's, there's two other areas which more so determine why these perceptions exist that you know women are too ready, readily able to leave for the next best opportunity and why men will prefer to cling to each opportunity if not go to the opposite end of the spectrum and be a player and just slut around. You know, that can happen as well. Still for the same reasons that I'm about to explain. So. I like to talk about the prime window of opportunity, all right? And when I talk about this, I mean in regards to, you know, the male and the female, you know, the, the times in their lives where the windows of opportunity are most abundant and they have the most potential to lure in a long-term mate, all right? So besides genetics, I think what men look for in women and what they're attracted to just think about it, when you walk past a guy, what's the first thing he looks at? He looks up and then down and up, right? He checks out your ass and your breasts. Now, a lot of people think it's the ass. Really, I like to think he's checking out your hips. You know, not just that booty, but it's all the curves and what we think constitutes beauty and an attractive bod. But he's actually seen, you know, sussing you out for, you know, top of the morning to you, uh, your potential to, to rear children, whatever. I'm just checking out some games. That's, that's what I get into, I don't see anything here, it's all good. On with the show. Um, so he's sussing out your potential to, to rear children and your, you know, breasts going back to Freud, there's always that relationship with, with the mother and the baby and breastfeeding and raising and all that jazz. So I think that's what, top of the moment, what guys look for is, is females that are youthful and, um, Fertile, there's the word, fertile. So you'd say that the prime window of opportunity for a girl then on this basis would exist between, let's be safe, 18 and 35, 40, at which point menopause starts rearing its ugly head and, you know, things start to change. So, between the years of 18 and 35, 40, so that gives us about 20, 25 years window of opportunity, prime window. I mean, this isn't to say that girls can't still pursue or be pursued afterwards and that they lose all value or attractiveness. I'm just saying that this is the prime window in which, you know, they will have received the most opportunities. And after that prime window, things start to cut down dramatically and they've got to start working a little bit more. Now, for a man, I think what a woman is attracted to in a guy is, besides genetics and personality traits maybe, uh, is his status and his wealth. And when I say status, I'm talking about his reputation, I'm talking about his, his affluence and the people he knows, I'm talking about his career and you know his financial success and his, his assets. 
um, talking about his image, his you know, reputation, how he is perceived in the eye of everybody, what he means to society, what he contributes, how much power and control he has fundamentally, and you know, how much he's built throughout his life. Now, in looking at this basis, you know, of a man being attractive based on his status and wealth, and this makes sense. You see a lot of girls with, with ugly guys, and got people think, wow, that girl's beautiful. Why is she with that sucker? Because maybe that sucker has more confidence than you. You know, he's got the status, he's got, you know, maybe he works hard and he's got the money, or maybe he's great with people and he's got the charisma, you know, and he's got the, the strength of vision and purpose to the point where that, that potential success that a girl can see in that man is, a, is enough of a turn on, so to speak, to keep her following behind. So looking at it on this basis, that a man's, you know, potential window of opportunity depends not just on his looks like it does the woman, which is more about beauty, youth, and fertility, but for a man it's about potency and how good he is in the bedroom, his status, and his wealth. And on that basis, he's looking between, I don't know, he's got between 18 years old and not just 30, 35, not even 45 or 55, a man can still be potent and he actually has more time to develop his status and his wealth up until the age of 60, 70. So compared to the woman's, you know, you'll notice I'm walking circles because I've done all the shopping I need to do, I'm just, you know, the show is called Walking and Talking with Phoenix, I can't really just be talking without walking because it would go against the point, wouldn't it? Um, so, you know, the woman, the guy's got about between 18 years old to potentially 70 in which to build up all these things. And that's giving him a, a roughly 45 to 50 years, which is doubling, doubling the amount of time that women have in their prime window of opportunity. Now, let's say a girl does, you know, doesn't want to settle for a guy just because of his status and his wealth. So maybe a more realistic cutoff point will be after 50, you know. After 50, a lot of girls will settle for older men just because they're rich, you know, and we see that all the time in the newspapers and whatnot. So even cutting it down, like even though a guy can provide everything he needs into, into his senior years, he can still provide the seed and that's what matters. Um, he's still got a considerable amount more time than the female does to develop his game to play the game and to pursue a wider range and number in his own time of opportunities. Now this has some great ramifications, implications if you think about it. If there was a shopping center quite like this one and men had the ability to, let's say the store was open 24 hours for guys, right? They could shop as much as they want 24 hours and for a woman, she only had 12 hours per day to shop. You know, the guy, if you see something he likes, you're like, ooh, that, that's a nice product over there. I, I wonder how much it is or where it came from or the quality of its design. Doesn't matter, I'll check it out some other time. You know, there's no rush because he's got all day and all night and all day and all night, any time to go about and uh, peruse his options, yeah? He can afford to window shop more. He doesn't actually need to get into the shop analyzing prices making decisions because he doesn't have much time. The woman on the ha other hand is like, oh my god, how much is this dress? How much dress calls up her friends, ask for opinions. Do you think I should buy this? What, what's, what's your opinion? Where's a better shop? Where can I get a better price? It matters more to the woman because she has less time to shop that she makes the right decisions in terms of what goods she's going to be leaving with. Now she'll be checking out all the options. She'll be looking at the prices, where it comes from, the quality of its design. The stuff matters more because she doesn't have all the time in the world just to per chance peruse and take whatever comes. So, I think the man, on one end, he can be a total player, right? And he can move on from one girl to the next, more so in his younger years, you know, up until the age of 30, in general. You get players up until the age of 30. Generally, I think after 30, even the players start to turn around. Some of them might be players their whole life, whatever. But I think in general, you get players in the younger years because with these guys, they realize that they've got a whole world of time to seize opportunity, you know, so they don't need to 
spend their first few years when they're more so building their own foundations and working on themselves, building up their confidence and their identity in their 20s, they don't need to commit to a woman or be faithful because they've got so much more time to window shop. Um, you know, and then on the other end of the scale, you have guys which a lot of girls complain about are too clingy, yeah, too needy, you know, too sentimental, too demanding emotionally. And I think it's for the same reason. If, let's say you're a man and you've got a very big pail of water, you know what I'm saying, meaning you've got a lot of time and energy, it would make more sense to, when you find a plant that is worth watering to fruition, to commit to that plant and take your time watering it. It would, wouldn't make much sense to just dump that plant and take the next plant that takes your eye because you're curious to see what the flowers will look like. You know, unless the pros of doing so heavily outweigh the cons of sticking to the plant. I'm going to turn around now just for something different. Unless the cons of staying with your current plant outweigh the pros of pursuing a new plant, it would, it would be a waste to water a plant halfway and then ditch it for something else. And it would prove all your efforts and your time redundant. You know, a man has time to water a plant and to see where it goes. And if it fails and it doesn't end up being the right plant and it doesn't yield the fruit that he wanted or wield the fruit, then he can leave it and he can pursue another plant. Like I said, he has time. You know, there isn't such a thick air of cruciality weighing in on his decisions. Um, you know, whereas a woman, you know, she's only got so much time as a plant to grow to fruition and develop and bear fruits or children. She's only got so many years of youth, so many years of a prime window where opportunities are abundant, you know. And given that, the, when I say opportunities, this is the female targeting a male age range between 18 and potentially 50 to 70. So there's a lot of opportunities there as opposed to men targeting girls between 18 and 35, 40. You know, some will settle for people older than 40, but generally, I'm, and I'm generalizing, it's, it probably goes up to 40 and then that's the cutoff point, 45. You know, unless, unless men are already that old and they don't have a lot of assets and wealth behind them, then they might start moving up and settling for less, so to speak. You know, so if a woman's a plant, she's only got so much time to grow to fruition and, and yield fruit, then she would want to make sure that she doesn't settle for the wrong pail of water, so to speak. She'd want to make sure she doesn't waste her time. So even if there is one guy that's supplying her with the nutrients she needs and everything she needs, the, the you know, support and nutrition, she might push that pail away in favor of a better pail because she's not as ready to just stick around and accept whatever works. Even if it's working fine, she wants what is best. She doesn't have much time. The shop's closing in three hours. She's gonna make sure that this is the talent that she really wants to stick with or where there is nothing out there that will be better for her overall. And whether she wants children or not, whether this factors into her decisions cons consciously, I believe that it's part of the design that women will be more big picture thinkers and they'll think, okay, what, not just what do I need, but what, do my fa what does my potential family need and my children need? She thinks about the future and factors in her current decisions to cater to that bigger picture. It's up the morning. So it would make sense I don't want to settle, you know, for any old pail that is doing the job. They want to settle for the best pail, doing the best job for everybody that is going to be potentially involved in the big picture for all of time. The fact that she has half as much time in her prime window means that she has a double, double motivation, twice as much motivation to make sure she's not settling for the wrong you know, settling in the wrong destination. The fact that men have twice as much time means he's half as motivated to really, you know, weigh things up as crucially and he can take his time. He has the luxury and he can afford to waste time potentially, you know, to stroll through the park as opposed to running. You know what I'm saying? And make sure you find the, the scene that you want to stick with. So, that's the basic idea. Uh, if you guys have any ideas on it, feel free to, uh, to post. But um, 
you know, I think the, the very basic observations, you know, the fact that a man has his whole life to develop his status and all of this, there's no need to rush. The fact that women don't have as much time, you know, you've got to make the most of your time and not settle for less. That's what grandma or mother always used to say, right? Don't settle for less. You get what you deserve. It matters. You don't have as much time to kill. So guys, don't take it personally. If you've been treating a girl good and you think you've given her everything she needs, maybe you have given her everything she needs. Maybe it has been enough. But the shop's closing soon. You know, for us it's open all the time and for them not so much. So don't take it personally, guys. Understand that even if you are enough and what you're giving is enough, it might not be the best that's on offer. And hey, if you found something in a shop that you thought, hey, this would do the job of what I'm looking for, and then you found something better that rewarded you more greatly and benefited you and everyone else you needed to benefit, for cheaper even, you know, for the same price, then you would probably replace that which is in your hand now for what is best in your hand next. It just makes sense. Why settle for less if you have the choice? And that's the point. Women have half as much time to make the right choices. So that's why I believe that there won't truly be both feet into commitment and the deep end of commitment. They'll always have one toe or one pinky on the other side of the fence, sussing out other possibilities. Because this shit matters. And once, you know, once they make that decision and they have children, generally it's the male that ends up with, or the female that ends up with the children when there's a breakup or divorce. Not the male, there's a lot of single moms out there, not so many single fathers. So for a woman, that's like, you know, fucking cuffs and chains, you know, ball and chain, and, and it's sticking them out one spot for the rest of their life. So that's another reason why a woman will be all the more, you know, not in a rush to stick with the wrong person. And uh, it's a lot more crucial in the way she makes the decisions. So, yeah, that's the basic idea. Probably elaborated a bit too much, but I think you get the point. Don't take it personally, guys. Everyone's got a different amount of time, different motivations, different limitations that might be imposed. And at the end of the day, we all want to do what is best for us and what best caters to our future big picture. That's the food for the thought to, for today. Cheers for watching and happy hunting.